I'm Greg McCandry from the University of Rochester, and I'm going to be giving a demonstration on how to set up the arthroscopic video equipment. First thing we're gonna do is just talk about what the different equipment is. And so this is our arthroscopic sheath. This is a trocar. These are the arthroscopes. And there's a 30 degree and a 70 degree arthroscope. We put these here in this example because those are the most common ones used in large joint arthroscopy. The reason it's called a 30 degree or a 70 degree is basically dictated by the bevel on the end of the arthroscope. So with this scope, you're actually looking at a 30 degree angle out the front. And with a 70 degree scope, you're looking at a 70 degree angle out the front. That allows you to increase your overall potential field of view. Uh, as you're performing arthroscopic surgery. The other key components to visualization is the arthroscopic camera. This has a cord that's coming out the back. Uh, generally, if you wanna orient yourself on the horizon, the cord is pointing down. There's usually buttons on the camera. These allow you to take still pictures or videos. Sometimes those are set for a single press or a prolonged or uh, double press. Uh, you can check with your uh, folks at your institution to see how that's set up. It's a good thing to know before so that you can take pictures and video as well as adjust brightness and other uh, facets uh, of the arthroscope. There's also on every arthroscope some way to adjust focus, usually a ring up on the camera and you just twist that back and forth to fix the focus. And then there's a coupling mechanism for allowing you to attach it to the arthroscope. The other important component is the light cord, which attaches to the light source and allows you to visualize. So what I'm going to do here is just set up the equipment uh, the way that it's typically set up for you on the table uh, so that you know how it got to that point. The first thing is we'll take the sheath and we're going to attach some inflow and some outflow to it. So this is our inflow tubing. Our outflow tubing, we generally cut to allow it to fix there a little bit more securely. Notice that the inflow and the outflow in this setup are directly opposite each other. And so if you have both of these valves open, the fluid is just gonna flow directly into the outflow and you're not gonna get anything that's going into the joint. And so in general, you usually have your outflow off while your inflow is on and you just turn the outflow on when you when you need it. Usually the trocar is inserted because the first step is going to be to insert the scope sheath into the joint with the trocar and usually everything will be handed to you off. So this will be clamped and the stopcock will be turned to off. So the next step that I'm going to show you is how to attach the arthroscopic equipment to the tower. The tower is basically a station that usually has a television or a video system on top uh, and then has spaces for everything that else that works the arthroscopic equipment. For us here, it's our computer system and our camera system as well as our lamp and light cord system and our power system. So the first thing we're going to hook up. is our arthroscopic camera cord. It just slides in there. The next thing that we're gonna hook up is our light source. And then we're gonna come back over to the table and assemble the remainder of the arthroscope. So I'm gonna take our 30 degree arthroscope and there's usually a little coupling mechanism here. So I'm gonna pinch that and allow that to get hooked in. And then we're gonna affix our light source. And the light cord usually just snaps on here. It's not usually a twist or anything like that. The other nice thing to note about this is that when the light cord is attached to the lens, the light cord comes in and gives you the direction of the bevel at the front of the scope. So with my light cord coming in this direction, it means I'm looking 30 degrees in that direction. If I were to turn it this way, it means I'm looking 30 degrees in this direction. You'll also notice that 
as the arthroscopes get older, or sometimes things get adjusted, that sometimes while you're doing arthroscopy, you'll orient something to look, say, at three o'clock, and this will just start falling down in the middle of the case. A lot of the systems will have a little nut that you can adjust and tighten. So by putting this here and me tightening this nut, it now fixes that with more friction to prevent that from falling. So at this point, we're now ready to go ahead and get into the joint. And so what you'll do with the flow not on is you'll hold the trocar in the arthroscopic sheath and put it into the joint. Then you'll uncouple your trocar, bring your arthroscope, couple that back together so that it snaps in nicely. Usually this only goes in with some orientation towards the light source. And so you just memorize that for whichever system that you have. And now that we have the arthroscope into the joint, we're ready to go. Some important mistakes I see people commonly make is that they forget to turn the inflow on because they're really excited that they're gonna do arthroscopy. And so you wanna make sure that you turn that stopcock and that you check and make sure that this is completely unclamped. So now you have good distension and visualization. The other important thing is you can notice that this light cord is dark. And if you look up at the screen, what we're seeing there is also dark. In order to do that, you need to turn the light source on. And the term that we use in arthroscopy for this is standby. So it's in standby mode most of the time because the light source itself is hot. It can cause drape fires. It can bother people's eyes if it's on. And it also burns out the lamp uh, pretty quickly if you leave it on for a prolonged period. And so best practice is when you're not using the arthroscope, it should be on standby. To take it off of standby, somebody usually has to click the machine to turn it off standby. And when that happens, you can see that the light cord now is filled with light. The other thing I did is on the screen there, it's asking me to white balance because we've not done that yet. White balance basically just tells the camera what color is what. So if you get into the joint and the cartilage looks green or some other color you're not expecting it to, it usually means your white balance is off. And the way you do that is typically by hitting the camera head button and then there's some indication that the white balance is fixed. And so now when we look up at the screen, we can see that we're looking at something white uh, onto the screen and we're ready to go.